Aethra and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Um, this, of course, is episode 2 of What Could Have Been, which is a docu-series about groups that deserve better but due to various circumstances have suffered a lot. Um, some of these groups are either still waiting for new opportunities or they've just quietly drifted apart and disbanded already. Each chapter will focus on two groups split up in episode form who have something in common, be it their agency, their concept, their scandals, etc. These videos do take a lot of time to research and edit and put together, so I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and shared it with your friends. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more K-pop content. Now I posted episode 1, which was about highlight, so make sure to check out that video if you haven't already. It'll be like in the i button on the upper corner of your screen. Also, um, I'll put a link in the description. And without further ado, let's get started with episode 2, the story of CLC. While the group currently consists of 7 members, CLC's debut lineup only had 5. Sunghee, Yujin, Seungyeon, Sorn, and Yeun. Thai member Sorn competed on K-pop Star Hunt and won the first season back in 2011, which led to her becoming a CUBE trainee. Like Sorn, Seungyeon also trained for four years. Seunghee trained for three years, Yujin trained the longest of over four years, and I'm assuming Yeun trained for somewhere between three to four years. The group debuted with Pepe in the spring of 2015. This is one of the greatest debut songs ever. A sharp contrast to their senior group 4 Minute, this music video was cute and charming. It has a funky and retro style to it, and the choreography was super fun too. Also, Yeun's rap verse is totally iconic. <laughs> I sort of moved away from CLC's music after their debut, I much preferred 4 Minute style, and they admittedly fell off my radar. CLC also released digital single 18, and soon after, their second mini-album Curious came out in May of 2015. In October, CLC had their first overseas activities performing in Malaysia. In February of 2016, CLC released their third mini-album with the title track High Heels. This marked the introduction of two new members, Elki and Unbin. Elki is from Hong Kong and had a successful career as a child actress. She was also in a project girl group called Honeybees. Now, Eunbin's story is a little different. Uh, Eunbin participated on the first season of Produce 101, the television show that would go on to create IOI. She did quite well, but was ranked 35th and eliminated in episode 10. Though she didn't make it in the final lineup, Eunbin gained immense popularity on the show. As a result of her contract with Mnet and the TV show, she was not allowed to participate in promotions with CLC or appear in the music video for High Heels. It's interesting that at the time of her elimination, Cube said that Unbin was supposed to be in the original lineup, but when the group's debut got pushed back, the company decided to put her in Produce 101 instead. Now, Unbin's inclusion in the group sparked some controversy, mostly because netizens accused Cube of being unfair. Their argument was if she was already gonna be in the group, why be greedy and put her on a TV show to boost the group's popularity? Personally, this argument doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, from a marketing standpoint, you would want your group to have as much exposure pre-debut as possible. On March 21st, 2016, Cube released the full version of the High Heels music video, this time including both Elki and Unbin. The first promotion period with all seven members was with the release of Nuclear, CLC's fourth mini-album. In April, CLC made their Japanese debut, where previously released Korean tracks were just sung over in Japanese. In July, CLC released their second Japanese EP, this time with the new title track, Chamisma. Chamisma is a portmanteau of charming and smile, and this music video will definitely make you smile. The concept is super adorable, and the song itself is really catchy. In 2017 is when I got reacquainted with CLC, and this was due to arguably their most notable song, Hobgoblin. This is my favorite title track. 
Everything about this song was phenomenal, from the styling to the choreography to just the song itself. <laughs> Not to mention the mini album, Chris Style is amazing. Every song is a bop. My personal favorites are Meow Meow and Liar. Hopgoblin is also notable because it was a huge shift in concept. My theory is that with 4 minutes disbandment in 2016, Cube decided to pass on the proverbial badass concept torch, so to speak, to CLC. And this was a pretty good decision. Um, CLC gained immense popularity as a result, and things were looking up. In the second half of the year, CLC switched concepts yet again, this time with a more wistful and mature release of Where Are You? Again, I loved it, I think this concept was really interesting, but it didn't do nearly as well as Hobgoblin did. It seemed like as quickly as CLC gained new fans with Hobgoblin, they lost them with Where Are You? However, with the added promotion of I Like It, a contemporary hip-hop b-side, CLC proved their attempts at versatility were not attempts at all, they were completely capable of pulling off different concepts. Twenty seventeen is also the last year in which CLC released two mini albums per year. Ever since debut, they managed to be consistent with releases, but that would change in the beginning of twenty eighteen. In February of twenty eighteen, CLC released their seventh consecutive mini album. That's right, almost three years in the making, and no sign of a full album in sight. But Cheshire's were grateful for Black Dress because it came about six months after the release of Freezem, and at least it was a mini album. Black Dress was yet another popular song, with an addictive beat, an intricate music video, and just a solid concept in general, the song was a hit with audiences everywhere. In fact, the album peaked at number 7 on the US World Albums chart. In April, CLC held a charity concert where donations would benefit the Diabetes Association. As a result, they were named ambassadors to the Korea Insulin Dependent Diabetes Association. In July, CLC held another concert, this time in Hong Kong. In November, Elki made her solo debut with the digital single I Dream. Elki participated in writing and producing the track, which is a dreamy ballad about overcoming hardships. Twenty eighteen was also important for two reasons: the debut of G Idol and the debut of Eyes. In May of twenty eighteen, Cube debuted girl group G Idol, with one of their most popular members being Soyeon. Soyeon also competed on Produce One Hundred One and was really popular. This, combined with the fact that the group had a multinational lineup, meant the public was really interested. Now, I want to make this super clear: I do not hate G Idol. I'm actually a fan, and I was supposed to see them when they came to the states for their tour. The reason that I'm bringing them up is that Cube experienced a shift in priorities at this time. G Idol is obviously way more successful than CLC, so it makes sense to invest in groups that will have a wider profit margin. Similarly, in October of 2018, Produce 48's final lineup debuted as Eyes One. Again, I don't hate Eyes One, I'm just not a fan of the music they make, but they're all super talented. Now, you might be wondering, how does this group relate to CLC's success? They're not under the same company, like what's the deal? Well, their debut song, La Vie and Rose, was actually supposed to be for CLC. They had already finished recording the song in preparation for a comeback in the second half of 2018, but the song was sold to Eyes One's company. As a result, CLC's only activities for all of 2018 were black dress promotions. Obviously, this was frustrating for Cheshire's, but I can't even imagine how frustrating it would have been for the girls themselves. Imagine spending months practicing and not being able to go through with promotion plans. According to an interview from 2019, Yeun said that this type of thing was actually pretty common in the K-pop industry, which is something I never even knew about. After 11 months, CLC came back with their 8th mini-album, Number 1, in January of 2019. This album contained the sickening title track, No. 
Now, I don't know a single person who doesn't like this song. It was such a cool and chic concept with great lyrics and powerful choreography. G Idol member Soyeon participated in production and writing the track, as well as Yeo. On February 12th, CLC got their first win for No on the show. No was also immensely popular amongst non-Cheshires and everyone was eagerly awaiting their next comeback. In May, CLC released the digital single, Me. The track's theme was a continuation of No, meaning that there was an emphasis on confidence and self-empowerment. In September, CLC released another digital single, Devil. This was yet again another concept change. Devil had more of a retro vibe to it, from the styling to the song itself. It was a pretty fun song, and a nice change from heavy hitting tracks like Me and No. But that's not to say that this song comes without any sort of criticism. Let's just talk about how low budget the music video is. We get, what, a few painted walls and some props? Talk about a major letdown from previous comebacks. <laughs> Many fans would argue that 2019 was a good year for CLC. And yeah, I, I do agree with that statement. I mean, CLC released one mini album and two digital singles on top of getting their first win. But, and there's always a but, there were and still are a lot of things lacking on Cube's part. CLC doesn't have official colors. Fine, whatever, not really important in the grand scheme of things. But there's also very little official merchandise available. KpopMerchandiseGuide.com writes that Cube made limited merchandise to be sold online, or more commonly, in the 20 Space Cafe in Seoul, which belongs to Cube as well. These items were postcards, stickers, slogan banners, small things like that. Again, all fine and dandy, at least they get merch, blah blah blah. But the most disheartening thing is that CLC still doesn't have a light stick after 5 years. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of groups who don't have light sticks or didn't even receive a light stick for a really long time, case in point FX, but I feel like this is something that Cheshire's have been asking for for a really long time, and the fact that Cube doesn't really listen to us, it just is really disheartening. And now, 2020. Arguably the worst year for many reasons that transcend countries and industries, CLC has not released any new music. It's really frustrating because even though we are a smaller fandom compared to other girl groups, we still try our hardest to stream. For example, in March, both Me and Devil charted super high on the US World Digital Songs chart. More specifically, Me became the second best-selling song that week only after BTS's Black Swan. Like, that's incredible. In April, Mnet released a trailer for a new hip-hop reality show called Good Girl. Yeun was included in the lineup, and she did really well. Uh, she went on to perform her original song, Barbie, which came out mid-June on M Countdown. The song is super cute and went really viral online with the Barbie Challenge. Now, that brings us to present day, July 8th, the day that I am recording this voiceover. What's new? Nothing. We haven't heard any comeback news, and the members might as well just be internet influencers at this point. Sorn has her YouTube channel, Singy has her YouTube channel, and pretty much all the members are quite active on TikTok and Instagram. Cheshire's believed that after G Idol's release of Oh My God back in April, we could be expecting a CLC comeback soon. Lo and behold, it is now July and we haven't seen anything yet, and actually, as I'm recording this, we just got news that G-Idol is making a summer comeback with a digital single, so who knows, maybe afterwards we'll get a CLC comeback, it might even be exactly a year from when Devil was released, I don't really know, you can never put it past Cube to do these things. My main issue with Cube's management is that they've clearly lost interest in CLC. Now obviously, it makes more sense to invest more money in groups that will bring in more money, thus benefiting the company as a whole. However, if you don't invest in a group in the first place, then obviously they won't have a lot of fans. Over the past five years, Cube could have done so much. They could have sent the girls to KCON, had them perform at end of the year award shows, do more reality or variety show appearances, promote more in Japan, just giving them more opportunities in general. I truly believe that CLC has immense potential, just like Highlight. Cube has a really good eye for talent as evidenced by both groups' lineups. 
I think that Cube heavily invests in their artists for a certain period of time. For Beast, I would say 2010 to 2013, and for CLC, I would say maybe 2017 to 2019, but they lack any sort of continuity. Highlight wasn't that much better off at their own company, but at least they were more active on their own. Now, do I think that CLC should just up and leave and start their own company? Maybe, because it's clear to me that Cube obviously doesn't care anymore. It just isn't fair to me that Cube has made CLC sit on the sidelines for months without giving them any sort of group promotional activities. Like at this point, I feel like they should dissolve their contracts and let the members go and do what they actually want on their own terms. I think a better example of treating two relatively popular groups under the same company in a fair manner is how JYP treats TWICE and ITZY. Obviously, there are some issues with the handling of both groups, but TWICE and ITZY release content regularly and interact with their audience frequently. If Cube applied this idea towards G-Idol and CLC, I think both groups would benefit immensely. Bottom line is, CLC deserves better, but not at the expense of another group floundering. Cube should manage their resources among all of their groups in a much more efficient manner. Okay, so that brings me to the end of episode 2 and the end of chapter 1 of What Could Have Been, a docuseries where I look at groups with wasted potential. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you. I know this video was quite long, but I hope you enjoyed it. I also want to say that I probably missed some things while doing my research and writing my voiceover, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, I'll be taking the next few weeks to come up with my next topic, but in the meantime, make sure to check out my other videos. I post videos about every five days, so if you're interested in checking out more K-pop content, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye!